why does race matter when it comes to reality shows? Because I've had so many comments from people that say, you know what, why would you even want to be on those shows? But why does it matter? Right. Well, I mean, the idea that a show like The Bachelor, which is the longest running dating show on television, should be able to discriminate against people of color in casting just because reality shows themselves are often superficial and shallow and bigoted, it's, it's two different things, right? Reality shows overall are very problematic when it comes to representations of gender and race, but people of color deserve opportunity, especially when it's job opportunity. Um, and in a, in a reality TV landscape that takes more and more rolls away from scripted television, mm -hmm. a lot of the time that's that's the way in to the entertainment industry. Okay, and, and it is more and more that is the way, yeah. Jen, you're right. Okay, so in your reporting, you say that the people behind the scenes often say, you know what, they're concerned about ratings and money, and that's the bottom line, right? So the implication seems to be that they're implying that if they did have a star of color on one of these shows, somehow it may negatively impact the ratings. Can you tell me a little bit more about what you found about that? Yes, when I was reporting for the Daily Beast about this lawsuit, what was really fascinating to me was I spoke with an insider, a high-level programming executive from a competing, a competitive network, not from ABC. Um, I spoke with a former Bachelor producer, and across the board, what folks inside the industry were telling me was basically, look, you know, we assume that the advertisers and the audience is, that these viewers and sponsors are not going to want to sponsor or watch a program that features interracial dating. We think that we'll lose money. Um, but the problem with that is Tell that the FCC, <laughs> the FCC mandates that uh, the television be produced in the public interest and separate from FCC mandates uh, this lawsuit is based on the same sort of civil rights law that helped to desegregate businesses in the 1960s south and mm -hmm. in the in the lawsuit it clearly says look um, you are not by a matter of law allowed to discriminate based on what your customers or what your viewers or what your advertisers might prefer you have more than 15 employees, you're a, a national corporation, so therefore you so, have to operate tethered to the rules of entertainment law. So basically saying that you don't get to just exist um, in this entertainment bubble, if you will. Right, and I just, I realized I said tethered to the rules of entertainment law. What I meant was um, that they need to be op tethered to the rules of civil rights law, which mm -hmm. because of creative freedom and artistic expression and First Amendment concerns, the entertainment industry basically operates unlike every other industry in the country. Right. Every other industry has to not have discriminatory hiring policies. But the entertainment industry says, hey, look, it's a creative process. We can do whatever we want. Well, in fact, you can't do whatever you want if it's legally discriminatory. Jen, I know you've done so much reporting on what goes on on these shows, on air, behind the scenes. What's your take on how these shows would change if there were someone of color featured in this starring role? Well, look, I think there is only a, a moderate amount of change that you can expect from a program <laughs> like The Bachelor, whose creator, Mike Fleiss, has said regularly things like uh, the reason his shows are successful is because, quote, it's a lot of fun to watch girls crying, never underestimate the value of that, um, who has said that the reason that people watch The Bachelor is because the audiences love to hate the girls um, and love The Bachelors. So, look... A show like The Bachelor, regressive gender politics from the 50s on, that's sort of its bread and butter. So if you diversify, you're not changing the basic premise of the show. The basic premise is, you know, men are wealthy, women are desperate fools, and, you know, never never that is going to change with The Bachelor. But diversifying will change the opportunity that people have to be a part of the pop culture landscape. And do we want to be part of better shows? Well, that's a whole different discussion, <laughs> that's a different right? different discussion. Yes, it is, Jen. Actually, I need to read this as statement before I let you go. Um, from the the, uh, the Bachelor people, it says, um, this complaint is baseless without merit. In fact, we've had uh, various participants of color throughout the, the series history, and the producers have been consistently and publicly vocal about seeking diverse candidates for both programs. As always, we continue 
continue to seek out participants of color for both The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. I know you also addressed that in this article. So I'm, Jen, I'm going to direct people to go to thedailybeast.com to see all of your reporting on this. And I appreciate it very much. Thank you. And if they want to learn more about The Bachelor and other issues around race and gender, they can also read my book, Reality Bites Back, The Troubling Truth About Guilty Pleasure TV at realitybitesbackbook.com. I'm surprised I didn't mention it because I love the title. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. Thank you.